Hi, in this course I'll be showing you how you can do data mining and scraping, both from a beginner perspective but also from an advanced code oriented perspective. So if you like what you see is what you get type of editors, click on stuff visually and get data back, you'll find answers here. But if you're a coder and you really want to dig into how you can extract data out of websites, you will find some awesome stuff in this course as well. We'll go all the way from simple existing services that help you do that and then dwell into code-oriented approaches to scraping and really go advanced. The first portion of the course can be helpful to anyone. There's no pre-requirement for you to know how to code. The second part, if you have an open mind and some programming background, you definitely can benefit and learn how to extract data out of the web. So let's get started. What is scraping? What is data mining and extraction? It's a way for you to look at the web and get the exact pieces you're interested in from a certain website without all the surrounding HTML, markup. You basically take a website and turn it into data that you can then use. In this first chapter, I'm going to talk about why you would want to do something like that, give you a few examples on what that means, show you a few alternative approaches that doesn't involve scraping or data mining. Then we'll talk about how scraping and data mining can work, touch briefly on its legality, and then start with the first demo on how you could do it. We will be scraping or data mining websites similar to Twitter or Yelp or Google, just as proof of concept. So why would you data mine? I'll give you three ideas. The first one is prototyping. Imagine you have this awesome idea and you're in Startup Weekend or in a similar venue and you want to try out this concept you have. Sure, you could go and talk to the companies and try to get the data from them officially, but that will take you a lot of time. And in most cases, companies are not going to be very likely to give you data just because you have a cool idea. Now eventually, you will need to go to the company and ask for permission to use the data. But if you had a cool demo of something that can be done, it could help you validate that what you're doing is actually worth your time. The second motivation is sorting and filtering. So imagine you wanted to know what topics really get people going on Reddit. If you had that data in a tabular form, you could easily sort and search and filter, potentially also analyzing which keywords or topics get people engaged. The third one is analytics. You could build a histogram of the type of restaurants opening in your area just by using tools like Excel and PowerPivot to dig into the data that you extract. So that was a bit of motivation and a few examples on why and how you could use data to empower yourself and your ideas. But before we get into data mining and scraping, let's talk about alternative methods that might be more suitable in your case. One thing that exists is this concept of API stores. API stores allow you to search and access lots of web connected services and data in a way that is agreed upon with the service provider. So the whole legality issue becomes a lot simpler because the terms of use are part of that setup. Another approach you could think of is using the official APIs of these different social networks or data stores. So you can think of Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, all as sources of data that potentially have APIs. And you don't need to go scraping those websites, but just using the official channels. Now mind you, you do have to look at the terms of use for those APIs. A fantastic book that talks about how you could use those APIs is Mining the Social Web, and you can find a link to that on our website. A third approach would be data sets, and this again depends on what you're trying to achieve. But looking at this Quora post, you will find a large number of data sets that you could leverage, use, analyze. They might not be up to date to the last minute, but in many cases, you don't really need the latest and greatest. You just need a lot. And that's one other approach you could be using. Now, assuming you're still interested in scraping, here's how it works. Imagine you had this website and you wanted to get bits and pieces extracted out of that website. The things you could do with scraping is automate the browser to visit that website for you. Now, those websites will find it very difficult to differentiate between you and your scraping bot because the methods I'll show you use pretty much the same browser you would use to visit those websites. Now, once your scraper visits a website, we learn how data is represented inside of that scraper and how we can instruct it to get that data out and save it for later use. The third thing we'll want to learn is how to then systematically figure out what other pages our scraper needs to visit, crawl those websites, and repeat the process. That's called crawling. Now, that said, extracting data out of websites doesn't necessarily have to be legal. So you will want to read the terms of use, of each and every website you're thinking of getting data out of because it could go either way. And everything we're showing you here now in this course is to teach you techniques 
not to endorse you going and ripping off all the data out of some website. In the end, many of those websites work really hard to generate that data and having you just jump in and extract it, mm, not cool. In the next chapter, we'll talk about ways to do it and start getting into demos. If you have any questions, comments, remarks, want to talk to a community that cares about similar things, find me on Twitter or on our website. Do reach out.